Hey guys, it's Eddie again. And I know it's been a while since I've done any videos, so I figured it'd be time to go ahead and do one. Uh, today we're going to work on uh, basically doing what I do as far as the check and clean of a furnace. So I'm going to start off by first showing you what tools I use, and we'll go through and show you the procedures that I use to check the furnace. And that'll be it. So let's get started. Okay, so what we have here is my Testo 330. We use it for combustion analysis. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's got a printer. Uh, we can print out the result and leave it on the furnace. Uh, but it pretty much makes sure that the furnace is running safely. Uh, carbon dioxide levels you want to check. You can also do a heat exchanger check to make to see if there's any leaks. It's pretty cool. I'll show you how to do that. And I've got my this is a tool that I got last summer after I shot my other videos. Uh, it's a Testo 435. Uh, when you check an airflow and BTU output, we had to do it longhand before, but with this meter, it does all the calculations for me. All right, and again, I can print it out, leave it on the ductwork, and just keep a copy of my, for myself. It just makes it a lot quicker. So I kind of like it. You got to check out. Then I've got my veto bag, it's got all kinds of my, all my hand tools, I've got my meters, burner brush, over here I've got my little vacuum cleaner that I use to vacuum everything out. So basically that's the tools that I'll be using. Uh, so let's get started. Alright guys, so one of the first things that I do is that I go ahead and pull the burners out and get them cleaned up. If they're just a little bit dirty, it could cause your carbon dioxide readings to be high. So I do that first. Then I own out my igniter to make sure it's good. Then I'll go ahead and fire it up and I'll check my flame sensor to make sure it's reading right. Then I go on to my combustion analysis and do the airflow and figure VTU output. So basically that's the rundown of how I do mine. So first, I'm going to go ahead and pull these burners out. These are the carrier brand. I'm going to remove the manifold to get the burners to come out. So I'm going to do that real quick and I'll be right back. The union to get this loose so I can get the manifold out is in between the furnace and the water heater and it's very tight. And Superman put that union on. It's really tight. I need a pipe wrench and I don't have one to get it loose. So I'm going to skip that step. But normally you would pull the burners out you would use a burner brush and just stick it in and just clean it out real good and just clean the burners real good. Put it back together. Alright, next thing I would do would, would be to ohm out the igniter. Uh, bolt ohm meters on ohms. You would take your meter and just touch one to each prong in there. And 80 and under is basically what I shoot for. This one's reading, uh, this is the small one, the newer small one. This one's reading 48, so it's pretty good. But on the big on the big igniters, the older style igniters, now anything over 80 I recommend replacing, 85 or so I start recommend replacing it, it might go bad. Anything over 100, for sure it's gonna go bad. All right, so this one checks okay. On the other side is the flame sensor. Uh, you need a meter that will read micro lamps. Right. If you need to read micro lamps, you can test it to make sure it works right. So basically, what a flame sensor does is pick up ground out of the fire. Fire will carry small amounts of electricity, very small amounts. So, the burners are connected to the burner box, which is grounded to the furnace. The flame sensor kind of hangs up there by itself. It's insulated with that ceramic piece, with the rod goes through the ceramic, so it just kind of hangs up there by itself. So it's not touching anything really. When the burners come on, the fire is obviously touching the burner, and it hits that rod, and that rod picks it up that small amount of electricity and it sends it back to the circuit board and it tells it okay the fire is going so that's how, basically how that works alright so we're going to go ahead and check it 
I've got to turn the furnace on. It's going to take a few seconds for it to start up. It's got that delay, so I'm going to turn it on, pause it, and I'll come back. All right, it's going to be starting here. So what we're going to do, I use one of these little alligator type clips. So I'll put it on my test lead. And we'll go ahead and unplug the flame sensor. Pointy lead. I'm going to stick it in here. Alligator clamp. I'm going to clamp it onto the flame sensor itself. We're just going to kind of wait for the furnace to start up. So once it starts up, I'll get back to you. Okay, the furnace is about to start up. I'll show you what we're looking for here. Got it on micro lamps. You can read that. Now, when it starts, that number should, you know, I'm looking for at least a 2.5 or higher. Uh, they're usually right around close to 4. So this one's reading pretty good. It's reading 4.6, 4.7. That's actually pretty good. Now, if that was reading 2.0 or lower, 2.5 or lower, anything 3 or lower or whatever, go ahead and pull that sand, pull that flame sensor out, get to a fine piece of sandpaper and just kind of clean that off. Uh, a lot of times it's going to read 1.2, 0 0.8. When it's reading like that, you're for sure going to call that. Right, so make sure that's up near 4, 3, 4, somewhere around in there. All right. So now, after this, I would go on to do my combustion analysis. I'm going to get all that over here, show you how I hook it up. So give me just a second. Alright guys, what I have here is my combustion analyzer. And what this is going to measure, it's going to measure uh, draft. Make sure the flue pipe, flu pipe is venting out properly. And it'll, I don't know if it's blocked or not. I'm going to hook up some tubing to my gas valve. It's going to check my gas pressure. Uh, then when we fire it up, I'm going to have to drill a hole in here. Now we're going to get a little controversy over this. This is B-Vent. Alright, you have to drill a hole through the pipe to get the probe in here. And that's going to measure carbon dioxide, oxygen, CO2. Uh, just measures everything. Now the main three largest manufacturers says it's okay to drill a hole through here and there's paper documenting and I can, I'm going to try to find the links and post them on here somewhere but they say it's okay to drill the hole through the B vent what you have to do though when you're done testing you have to use high temp silicone silicone the inside the inner liner then put a piece of metal tape over the outer side so they say that's okay like that so that's what I do so I'm going to get the gas pressure hooked up and I'll show you how to drill the hole and do all that so give me just a minute alright so I'm not sure if you know how to hook up for gas pressure testing but I'm going to show you the gas line coming in you're going to have a little fitting here that's going to be your inlet do not take that off do not hook it up here you can check inlet pressure but make sure your gas valve back or your gas cock is turned off if you want to check inlet pressure but that's not where we're going to check right now we're going to come out here on the manifold side which is here it says out we're going to take that little fitting off right there and we're going to hook this fitting to it so it just screws right in here then we'll hook our plastic tubing to that and that hooks to my meter so i was just trying to show you all what i was going to do here well, well 